you got a sermon this weekend, man. How, you know, where's your head at with the message and everything you got on your plate this week? Yeah, so we started uh, working through non-negotiables. We're looking at, you know, love, love must listen, um, love must work. Uh, and then this week, we're kind of looking at the way love really needs friends or needs people in their life. Um, and if you're looking for a spouse, if you're looking for someone to be with for a long time, like you need to ask the question, how do they treat other people? Like, how do they relate to other people? You know, because the qualities that we look for in someone that we want to be with are already being shaped by their existing community or lack of community, you know? And so sometimes we don't, we actually underestimate the value of that person's community and how that's going to affect your relationship with them, you know? So like, how does the person you really like or you're really into like talk about their ex? How do they talk about their old job? You know, how do they relate to their parents? Because all of that is informing you of the kind of person they're being shaped into and the kind of person they're going to bring into a long-term relationship with you, you know? And so, um, and this is, so I'm hoping as I think on Monday, the start of the week, to like um, brainstorm an idea of like the role of friends and friendships and healthy relationships uh, in creating and forming you into the person that's like ready to be with someone long term, you know? So I think on everybody's, you know, list of non-negotiables has to be that they are in healthy relationships with other people, you know? So it, it's gotta, it's gotta happen. So, because the Proverbs 31 woman, like she relates well to the people she does business with. Um, it says there that her husband entrusts his whole self to her, which is such a, a great idea of like vulnerability, you know. Her, uh, her kids raise, like rise up to, to praise her. Her hands are open to the needy. So it seems like in every sphere, she relates really well to people. Like she has good relationships. She knows how to befriend other people. She has good friends. And so I think that is so critical. And when you think about it, when you zoom out of Proverbs, not just the 31, the 31st chapter, but all of them like really deal with this idea of friendship, you know, and, and how pivotal it is. And oftentimes we don't, we, I don't know if we have that on the top of our list when we think about what are the non-negotiables of, of someone, you know, what I really need from love. I think you need, you need a friend, you know, you, you need a friend as well. And so, and in order to be a friend, like you, you, you need to figure that out for yourself too, you know. So, oh, great. That's John calling. All right, we done. <laughs> Boss is calling. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm ready. Look at this. NBA, if you're watching this, if you ever see this, please. Come to Sales Church and, and switch the logo. Kobe Bean Bryant. Anyways, yeah, so my soundtrack choice, Interstellar. Yeah, yeah, I get like a, yeah, to get the mood right. What is it about that that is good for Um, Dude, somewhere they said that soundtracks or like non, um, like just instrumentals are supposed to be good for like thinking and processing. So, yeah. But when I get to application, which is very strange, I told Ashley this the other day, I put on a lot of rap music because rappers say something very succinct and like timely and like tangible in like such a short phrase. You know what I mean? So if I'm thinking like, what's the last thing I'm gonna say in the sermon? I throw in hip hop music, strangely enough. Wow. Yeah. And they also, they, they come at it, there's like a tone of confidence. And so I feel like I, uh, I lack that sometimes, honestly, when I'm getting ready to teach. I always think this point will suck. <laughs> like no one will be like, like, oh, I came to church to hear the guy tell me trust God. Okay, cool. <laughs> so I just feel like, uh, yeah, I don't know, just their, their tone puts me wow. in a better space, as weird as that is. So yeah. musically, when it comes to this prep, you'll hear anything from like this song, which is like some Hans Zimmer, like space opera music, to classical stuff, to like hip hop, which is kind of strange. So, yeah. That's fine. There's just so yeah. much that goes into your like writing process. I feel like that nobody knows. Oh yeah, dude. There's a, I think anyone who's like yeah prepping is like they have all their weird forks, what they eat. What all right. Eat? Well, I got you know <laughs> the shake, the shake going and the donut, <laughs> and the donut going too. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Probably whatever helps them feel like 
more like themselves or whatever they got to do to like just be relaxed in the moment, you know? So, so essentially what I'm doing, <clears throat> phrases that I want like that I'm playing with that I'm going to start out with kind of go up top along with the, the working text that I have. So I still got Proverbs 31 up there, even though I think I'm going to switch to Proverbs 27 and 17, which is a more like just kind of well-known proverb on friendship, you know? Um, what I do in blue is like quotes from texts I've been reading. So like that book, uh, Reclaiming Conversation, I was reading her stuff on um, the way the digital age has affected friendships, you know? And then uh, any quotes from like other books that like I, I found. So like Tremper Longman, I got some stuff from him on, um, on the Proverbs. And so, and then here's my actual outline. So I'm trying to get better. I think in the last four sermons, I've done a better job of creating an outline first, like where I want to go, and then like listening to other voices after that, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, so, I mean, you almost see it, like I have it set up essentially how, like it's going to look on the sermon notes, except I have a bunch of phrases that I'm just kind of toying around with, so. All right, man, do your thing, dude, thanks for coming through. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> so you're talking about friendship this weekend. What is like? How does? And it's middle of the week, so it's yeah. Wednesday. So what's in your head like when you think about like being present in that? Like, what does that kind of look like? Yeah. Um. Think about my own relationships with people, like who I can, who I can hit up, who I can call, um, and like also listen to like what, not just what I think God, what God wants to make clear this weekend, but. Um, what he wants to make clear to me in my own life too, you know? And so, especially if we're trying to identify people who we want to spend the rest of our lives with and understanding how friendship is, is key to that, you know, not just for your your union and your marriage, but like when you're looking for someone, like you want to look for someone who actually is being shaped by people in a healthy way, you know, in a good way. Because um, counter to like our cultural moment of like, I am who I choose to be, like that's just not true. Like you are, you are who your people tell you to be. You know, wow. like it's very much the case. Like we're just, we're just made like that. You know, like romantic, romantic love created us, right? Yeah. Like familial love, like raised us, but like friendship love, like really carries us. I think like into into all these other healthy places of life that I think God wants us to enjoy. You know, and so yeah, in the day to day of just like getting ready to talk about that, it's yeah. also important to be like, oh man, who are the people that I can chat with, you know? Wow. Um, reach out to, you know, who, who, I can, who I can be involved with. You know? I got a birthday this weekend, so like people are coming, you know? Um, yeah, I'm excited to see, see people, you know? That's so, awesome. yeah. Because the sermon's gotta end, but the life like that has, has gotta continue, you know what I mean? And yeah. so like, if there's nothing that like connects to what you want to say to like actually what you're doing like it's just it's such a like duplicitous life you know what i mean like it's such like a oh it's kind of it's scary to think about you know like there's no integrity there's no like alignment yeah. congruency that's what i was gonna so, say is like it, i think that's cool because that feels like that feels like integrity for you the speaker Can yeah you help me, bro? Cool. for you the speaker <clears throat> to like and the teacher to actually care about that. Yeah. To actually care about, like, because dude, essentially what you're saying is like, I don't want to just say something. Like, I better, I better. Yeah, I want it to shape me. Out. Yeah, I want it to shape me. Yeah. It's really yeah. cool. And I think all the people who you know we would aspire to are like, man, that person knows how to communicate or tell a story. You're like. They just, they just seem to be so so faithful as they, you know, shepherd their church, you know, and the way that they teach them, like, I'm almost confident it's coming out of, like, a life that's well-lived, you know. If not, it's going to be exposed at some point, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, because that's the other scary thing is, like, you could, uh, <laughs> you could be, like, God will use you, 
like to serve other people until it's time for you to be like exposed, you know, for what isn't there. And so I think just as like a young pastor, I'm like practicing being more aware of that, you know, and making sure other places in my life are are happening, you know. It's so, a hard gig, dude. Yeah. It's a hard gig. Yeah. But it's like, it's very enjoyable too, yeah. you know, so. Because when I sit down and I just want to hear from God, I want to read his word. Like, so this is what matters. Like, this is really what matters, you know. I want to sit down and like see my see my kids, you know, and see Ashley and like hear Ella tell me like bye bye dad dad bye bye dad dad like those are the, those are the words like I'm really excited to hear, you know, like before I'm like just to, before you're just like totally trying to be focused in this like one moment, you know, on a weekend. <clears throat> so this thing, why why would why should someone come to Sandals Church, you know, and like. Like spend their time there on a Sunday, among the many other things they could do. Like, what would you say yeah. to the person who's not, um, who's not a Christian? Yeah, Man, that's a great question, man. Oh, I think, yeah, I think to the person who's not a Christian, not regularly in church, doesn't get it. I would try, I would try to show them in whatever way I could, like they were designed for what happens like each and every weekend like they were intentionally designed to be a part of this community in this way you know um and there's a part of them that aches like for this kind of community for this kind of experience you know as people sing as you as you hear from god through his word you know i think all of those things are deeply tied to like how how we're designed and, and made up and um yeah, I think it's one of the rare places where you can be completely and fully known and still safe, you know. Um, and where we all kind of like migrate to and like live in now, like that's just not always the case, you know, to be able to find a place where you can be just completely known in every way and st still be safe, I think is, is really, really cool, you know. And so, um, yeah, and so that's, that's what I would in some way try to like yeah. try to help you know point point someone yeah. along to you know so and also like just look at all the places in current culture now where like you see this proven so for example like i own a peloton i was telling ashley this like you, you feel like you go to church when line? you listen to these instructors wow. like they tell you to get up they tell you to be focused they tell you to think about like how grateful you should be you know and wow. how, how to spend your time and be resourceful and you know, take steps each and every day, right? Like people, again, we were designed for this. And so because we are post-Christian, we find what we were designed for just in other pockets, you know? So for some, it's the mall, right? Like they, that's where they go to worship. That's where they go to sing. That's where they go to like cover themselves, you know, and like deal with their void. For others, it's like athletics and sports, right? And so the, the temple is still very much around. You know what yeah. I mean? Like we're still people made for the temple, and yeah. so it just looks it just looks very differently for a lot of people, you yeah. know. So because I feel it, dude. When I'm on the bike, like I feel like yo, people are in here. Like they're in the, this is their church, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like this this is a worship service, you know. Wow. I feel the same way at the mall, and I'm walking around and seeing posters that like tell me this is what life should look like, you know. Like that's it's, that's a sermon, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's a sermon and an advertisement, you know. Yeah. And so. I think the same for athletics, like just victory, triumph, unity, you know. Yeah. And again, those all those areas like have aspects of good for sure, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But they also just reveal, I think my original thesis, which is like we were designed like yeah. for this kind of experience with people and with God. And so, uh, yeah, as bizarre as it might sound, like it's something that we were made for, you yeah. know what I mean? And so that's why the church just continues to endure like it's, it's not going anywhere you know what i mean and in places where it's actually most hated it's actually thriving like incredibly you know yeah, um, yeah not so much here here in america but um, in other parts of the world like, you know they're growing dude it's yeah. happening so yeah yeah
feel going into the nest this weekend, man? After a week of prep, yeah, how does it feel? Feel, uh, I feel ready, um, content too, like whatever the work, you know, that's been done is done, like you gotta roll with it, you know? So at this point it's like a lot of handing off, like all right God, like help bring this word to life, you know? And breathe on this, <laughs> breathe on this word and, uh, and, and speak, to, speak to your people. So yeah, in all I feel good, so yeah. yeah. Um, I eat, I have more like protein shakes so that my, you know, don't get the tummy, don't get the, the bubble guts. Yeah. Uh, um, usually try to stick with the same Psalms, like say, you know, Psalm a day, take that in. Um, Ashley will pray for me, you know, spend some time praying for me. So, um. Yeah, I can't think of any other of any other routines. So get some moments of quiet, because you know for the next next what 24 hours, like it's just a lot of talking, a lot of words, a lot of noise. Yeah, five times, right? Yeah. So moments of quiet are like just gold, um, and then some fun music to relax. Like you you got to relax, you know. So probably you know the way. Yeah, definitely try. I try to do things that remind me of who I am. Right, like so that I'm not forgetting that in the process. So, um, like I wear I wear sneakers because it's a part of who I am. Like I've worn sneakers since I was a kid. Obviously, sneakers are like you know, church is all about them right now. But some of us have been in sneakers like since you know our parents had us in the YMCA basketball league. So I do little things like that that help remember, like help me remind myself of who I am, remind me of my humanity. Um, that are just easy, simple, like my favorite songs, some sneakers to relax me, you know, and a few other routines. So, like a little bit of little bit of food, dude. A <laughs> little bit of food. That's awesome. But, um, I, what, what's Ashley like? What role does Ashley play? Oh man. Sherman, man. Aside from God and the work that He does in helping me. She's probably the most pivotal relationship to, to making it happen. Like, I process things with her, I bounce phrases, illustrations. So she has, she, you know, she hears the sermon in a sense first and gives me really good feedback. You know, like that's, that's not really you or that is you or do you have any stories or, wow. you know, that doesn't even make sense yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I can tell by her reactions at times, like, yeah, you, that's not ready. <laughs> like, go, yeah, dude, she she really is, man. And um, you know, people will be like, "Oh, thank you for the word, good message, thank you." But like, really, they sh everyone should be thanking her. You know, like I can't do what I do unless she is who she is. You know, um, and even in a message on friendship, like she's my best friend. You know, like I have no one in my life quite like Ashley. You know, and so um, yeah, she plays a pivotal role. And, and not just that, but also like we talk about our calendar, we talk about the week, you know. So she, dude, she carries a significant load, you know, um, that I, I could just appreciate and try to honor and serve, serve her after the fact, you know. So, but yeah. What's going on, everybody? Well, we are in this series called The Non-Negotiables, in which we're asking what it is that you and I really need from love. Like, what's on your list of non-negotiables? What's a must-have? And the reason why this is so important, because you can summarize your life as this, a pursuit of love. And so if most of our life is in pursuit of the love we know we need, we should, we should probably know what's on that list. And if you're joining us for the first time, here's what we've been discovering over the last few weeks. First, we learned that love needs to listen. It needs to listen. If someone's going to love you, they're gonna to listen to you. And in respond, you're gonna become a person who can also listen as well as you give and receive love. 
Last week, we also discovered as we walked through the book of Proverbs that love needs to work. It's going to take practice. It's going to take effort. It's going to take you and I devoting ourselves through sacrifice, rhythms, to commit to this kind of love. Love needs to listen. Love needs to work. Today, hear me now, the third non-negotiable on your list is this. Love needs a friend. Love needs a friend. Now, if you are a Christian in here or a non-Christian in here, I think this is true for all of us. Because imagine for just a moment you giving all of yourself, your your body, your emotions, your spirituality, your your whole life to someone and them not being your friend. We can't live like that. It, It makes more sense to imagine that your lover is also your friend. And so if you're going to be looking for someone to spend your life with, you should consider, can they be your friend? So look at their current relationships. How do they treat people? How do they interact with others? How do they treat their ex? Because that might be you too. (laughs) How do they talk about them? How do they treat their family? How do they treat their friends? Who are they currently in relationship with now? And so our goal this morning is for you and I to become the kind of friend we want to have in our lives. We believe God is going to help us do that as we listen to his Proverbs. Because You know, at the end of the day, this is what's true about all of us. When it comes to our relationships, we attract who we are, not necessarily who we want. And so if you want to experience friendship, you need to be that kind of friend. If you want to see in your love life, your spouse be a friend, you need to be that kind of friend. So God's got a word for all of us today. 